Hey guys, welcome back once again. Uh, we are going to be covering uh, another request. A lot of people had uh, questions about transition. So I've got with me here Becky and um, Courtney. <laughs> and we're going to be doing not just, uh, we're going to go a little deeper with uh, the technique, the footwork of transition. Uh, so that way you guys can understand uh, how you can become better at doing so. Uh, so let's get started. Good. So talk about what are, what are you doing? What is the first thing when you transition in? What is the first thing that you guys are doing? I mean, when I'm hitting my third shot drop, I'm looking to see how good my, my drop was, okay? I'm seeing where Simone's making contact. Again, when we're transitioning as the servers, we're trying to earn our way up. If I hit a ball that's a little high, if you noticed, my first ball was pretty low, so we started coming in. Second ball was a little higher. Had to make sure, rule of thumb, we stop our feet. I had to stop my feet almost immediately because my ball was a little high, I didn't earn my way up yet. Mm. One thing that I look at is, as my partner is the one hitting the third shot drop, is I'm looking to see kind of how she feels about her drop shot so that maybe she doesn't like her drop shot so she's not coming forward and then all of a sudden I'm six feet in front of her and now we're no longer a solid team. So I'm looking to make sure that uh, we are together as a team. Maybe I'm a step or two ahead of her because I can be because I didn't have to do the work uh, in hitting the ball. Uh, and I think you'll notice one of the biggest things is that, you know, Becky was talking about stopping and watching. Uh, make sure that you guys, it's very different from you know, different sports have different stops, like the split, a little split step, and they do have a little split step in there. Uh, make sure that in pickleball, because we're so close, it should be a little bit before I hit the ball for them. So, or for me, and vice versa. But making sure that you stop and you square off is key. Because otherwise now, if you are running in as the ball is coming, and, and we can show also one of those, but but you're going to notice that they are actually stopping before I'm hitting. So let's do it again here. Okay, now they're stopping. Hit, move. Good. Nice. And again. Yeah, there you go again. So again, looking at, there you go, ah, do it again. I stopped too late. There you go. So, so that one, then the ball played you I a got little caught. bit. Yeah, got caught. We all do it. There you go. Perfect. Good. So big difference because then you also have more time to react to the ball that is given to you versus when you stop, but even like that tiny little bit. Then the court's too small. Yeah. Ooh. That was the last video. Ooh. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Good. So again, the repetition, I, you have to work on transition to get, to get this down. So, uh, what would you say that when you're warming up, for example, how much of this are you guys doing? So much. I mean, honestly, I would say that uh, probably 60% of drills, drill games involve the transition zone. Okay, good. Exactly. Can I add something kind of yeah, separate? Absolutely. Yeah, So basically, one thing that we really try to get away from is calling this the dreaded no man's land, okay? Yep. Because that's what a lot of us tennis players come into pickleball calling it. That has the implication that we have to hit from here, and the next time we hit, we have to be here, okay? It's tough when we have partners, we're playing with people who are, when we hit the third shot, they're going, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's just not realistic. Get up there. We're, for the <laughs> most part, we're not going to get up there in one shot, okay? And like Courtney said, that we have to practice in this transition zone here because we need to know how to hit it. Pros, top players and everything practice so much transitioning from here because it's a hard shot. It is a hard place to be, but we need to know how to hit from there. And just so you know, a lot of the times, so this is much more uh, active. 
sometimes like for, for example my favorite thing to do if you guys can come up real quick my favorite thing to do is literally be stationary here and let them come at me so uh, and again this is a lot of the times people don't practice here but at the the higher level that you play the more you're going to have to play from here so just sometimes getting that repetition so one thing first things first here so my feet are square they are facing the, if facing the court i'm not turning on my side there is no time to do that my paddle is out in front of me the other thing that i see a lot of times people bend their knees but the, their upper body is straight and their elbows tucked in. You're going to notice that when I'm hitting, my body is actually forward. I'm catching that ball out in front of me, but I am leaning forward. And I'm on the balls of my feet, getting set. There you go. So again, this tends to be where now my balls are rising. I want to catch I would say at least a foot in front of me but in order for that to happen I need to have to I need to I must have my chest over my knees okay so what would you say that um, one of the biggest issues that you see when teaching um, let's see I would say one of the biggest issues is such a narrow foundation so when you're in a smaller stance, it's much harder for you to A, get low and B, even bend your knees because when you bend your knees, your uh, body weight is more so um, on your backside instead of being able to uh, really lean forward and, and be positioned on the balls of your feet. Good, yeah. how about you, Becky? I mean, when I'm teaching going through the transition area, what I always just have to repeat and everything is just don't hit and run because that's yep. what it really becomes. It becomes, we always talk about, okay, watch your ball, watch the height of it, but a lot of us just have the tendency to just hit and no matter where it is, come up. Now, next thing we know, our opponent's hitting an overhead at us. We've become a target, all right? And Don't I'll, rush. I'll, yeah, and I'll show, you, I'll show it to you guys what not to do here. That's what we see a lot. Mm -hmm. So what Becky's talking about is this and then, and then now, I, because again, I'm obsessed with getting to this line. By the time that comes at me, I am, I'm out of sorts. I don't even know where the ball is going. So making sure that you're stopping and getting set, that's, yeah. I'm sure that that's like primarily, I would say that we work on that in lessons. Yeah, I mean. 60, 70% of the time. I always say to people, our goal isn't to get to net. Our goal is to be competitive in the point and hopefully win the point. Us just getting to the net, if we're rushing up there, we're uncomfortable, we're tense, and we lose the point on the next shot, what has getting to the net gotten us, you know? Yeah, and I, I, do, I, do, I, I do get tricky with our students, and I'll ask, so what's your goal when playing pickleball? And the first answer that comes to, to the, 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 the first answer always is very tricky, but they say, to get to the non volley zone. And I was like, well, good for you, because my answer is I want to win. <laughs> so, so a lot of the times, and I'll say no participation medals will be awarded for getting to the non volley zone. So just think about transition area is, yes, you have to hit good shots from there, but your goal is to win the point. If getting to the line gets you killed, then don't, don't just move forward work your way in, get better at transitioning, get better at those shots, so that way, yes, if you are in the non-volley zone, your chances of winning the point are higher? Absolutely, they are. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and again, just be better.